Before we start with what are the complexities involved in the eukaryotic cell in transcription, we have a small topic that needs to be understood before getting into that and that is what is the relation between transcription unit and the term gene. Okay, now you know who gave this term gene. What is gene in terms of understanding the genetic composition or genetic expression? We talked about the gene being a pivotal character in the expression and it has an effect on the metabolism. Now, if we have to express gene in terms of transcription unit, this term becomes quite complicating. Okay. Certainly, gene is responsible for expression. It is some part of DNA, right? But if we have to say the gene in terms of genetic, uh, in terms of DNA segment, it is quite complicated. How it is complicated? First of all, this D, this gene is a part of uh, transcription unit, right? Transcription gives rise to RNA, which could be tRNA that is also formed out of. Uh, transcription it could be mRNA so we cannot say which is a gene whether the one which gives rise to transfer RNA or whether it is the one which gives rise to messenger RNA first complexity second is that this gene has an effect in expression so if we express that gene is that part of DNA which forms the polypeptide that sounds quite accurate okay right it is that part of dna that gives rise to a polypeptide after that protein uh, synthesis that seems little bit accurate now in the part of transcription unit the structural gene forms the mrna as well as trna so that part of gene that forms messenger rna is the gene okay so gene would be that part again it is little bit difficult to understand it is little bit confusing because this mrna in eukaryotes is not fully processed it has to undergo processing okay and it has to form the final rna okay the rna that is produced out of the transcription unit in the case of eukaryotes have to undergo processing it has some non coding parts so that non coding part is known as intron and exon we'll come to these two terms but before that these on on in the end we have one more term that is cistron What is cistron? Cistron is that part of DNA which forms the polypeptide. This you have to remember. That part of DNA or interchangeably we use it for gene but gene is not that specific. Cistron is that sequence of DNA which results in the formation of a polypeptide as a result of protein synthesis. Now in this cistron, from this cistron messenger RNA is being formed, from this messenger RNA a polypeptide is being formed. So we get that sequence of DNA which codes for the polypeptide known as the cistron. Now you have to remember one thing that eukaryotes have their monocistronic DNA. and prokaryotes they have polycystronic DNA that means the structural gene that would be flanked between promoter and terminator that means a transcription unit will form more than one polypeptide but in the case of eukaryotes a transcription unit will give rise to a single polypeptide this is what monocystronic and polycystronic means and what cistron means is that part of the dna which gives rise to polypeptide instead of calling it as a gene which was giving rise to both trna and mrna apart from that which was giving the expression so that vague term has been replaced by a quite specific term known as cistron when studied about cistrons in the prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells we saw two conditions one was 
showing monosystronic arrangement while the other was polysystronic. That means the transcription unit gave rise to more than one polypeptide or more enzymes and in this case only one polypeptide was formed. Now when the RNA is being produced, mRNA is being produced in the eukaryotes, what happens is the cystrone has given rise to mRNA and that mRNA undergoes the processing stages and it forms the final RNA. Now this processing involves removal of intermediate sequences known as introns. Now these introns are those useless sequences present on mRNA which are removed and what is left exon exons are left okay so exons are those coding sequences on the RNA which would ultimately be responsible for formation of polypeptide within a cistron there are introns and exons the introns are those intermediate or the sequences between exons that's why they are introns. Between two exons, there is a sequence that is present that has to be removed. That means it does not code for the polypeptide arrangement of amino acids. So, the exons are actually that part of the cistron which would be responsible for forming the polypeptide. The introns are unwanted sequences which are present between the exons and they are removed by a special process known as splicing that we will study in the next lesson. So, this mRNA undergoes processing and forms the final stage of messenger RNA. This mRNA earlier is the primitive RNA or the precursor RNA. Primitive is not the right one. The precursor RNA undergoes processing, finds, uh, forms the final mRNA which has only exons. So, you get an idea what exons are, what introns are and where cistron is. Cistron is on DNA. Introns and exons are formed from the cistron. Okay, and once the introns and exons are formed, then the introns are removed and then finally we have that mRNA which would be coding for the amino acid sequences. Now that particular arrangement on the DNA which gives us mRNA is termed as cistron. This you have to remember and next we understand the complexities in eukaryotic transcription.